Ryan Bridge talking this morning with David Seymour and Chloe Swarbrick about uh, the treaty principles referendum. Um, let's talk about Madame Davidson for a second. She's talking about severe or, or intense social unrest if this referendum on the treaty goes ahead. We just heard from Chris Luxon this morning. He says his party is dead against it. They're not in support of it but didn't say it wouldn't happen. Is that something that you're pushing for in these talks? Yeah, of course. And look, ACT has long said that our treaty is something that ultimately belongs to everyone. Uh, the principles of the treaty are important to how New Zealand works, what our constitutional settings are. We all have to live under that. We should all have a say about what those principles mean. Remember, it's Parliament that said there are treaty principles, but Parliament has never debated what they are. That's been done by the courts, it's been done by the Waitangi Tribunal, the Public Service has done it. Everyone's had a say except for the vast majority of New Zealanders. Now I believe that New Zealand should be a country where we can have... It does make it interesting though because Parliament's never debated it. I wonder if therefore does logic now follow that we get a chance to everyone have their say on all sorts of laws? Like Parliament debating the speed limit? Can we now, can we have our say on that? Can we have our say on all sorts of other rules and laws? Uh, you know, what about a monarchy? Can we have our say on that? And will that be the situation that we follow? Uh, it just seems, it seems to be one of those things that's quite, um, I can't think of the word, but it's it's convenient, that's the word. That once it again- Depends on how many um, lobby groups and AstroTurf groups get spun up in, in favor of 120 kilometer hour speed limit in suburban areas. The, the convenience that any time Seymour wants to seem to uh, put thing in front of the public eyes, it has to do with race. That seems convenient mm -hmm. again, again in this. Uh, yes, that's his poo face. I think he's just slipping one out, Chewy. We keep going? Yep. Rational debate about our future, what it means to be a New Zealander, what rights and duties people have, what our treaty that founded our country mm. ultimately means. When I hear politicians say, no, you can't have You're that discussion because people will do bad things if you try and have a discussion, I think that is so uncivilised, it's so irresponsible, and I kind I of mean, expect it from the John Tamahedes and the Willie Jacksons of the world. I mean, those guys are old radio shock jocks, they do that kind of thing. But to hear it from the Green Party, first from James Shaw, which was a real surprise. Mm. Now from Adama Davidson, I think that's it's irresponsible and I think the Green Party should actually say no, we, we believe in rational debate and discussion. We will we will discuss why we disagree, not threaten that somehow there's going to be some sort of unrest. Okay. Is it, is it some there is also an interesting thing he said amongst that uh, diatribe of verbal diarrhoea. He said, no, you can't have that discussion. Like he's saying, if we're going to live our life by no, you can't have that discussion because bad things will happen if you do have that discussion. I was just thinking, as he said that, about it does feel like that there is a call by many to suppress conversations around the Israel-Gaza thing because bad things might happen. So again, it feels like David Seymour is saying, of course we should have this conversation. It doesn't matter that people are saying bad things will happen. We should still have the conversation. Yet there are a whole group of people, and he may not be calling for, um, he may not be calling necessarily to restrict that speech, but he certainly seems to be in the camp where other people are who are calling for the restriction on speech around Gaza, quote unquote, because bad things will happen. So again, like speech for thee, or for me, but not for thee, is this another example of it straight from one of the architects of the controversy around Chloe Swarbrick's statements? Chewie, you got something you want to share? Um, I'm only assuming that as soon as you hit play, Chloe is going to reach over and make him eat that tie. Well, should we Am see, I, shall we? Am I correct? We'll have a look. Think Green it's party. One <laughs> is yeah. it something you would be willing that would force you to sit on the cross benches over if you didn't get your way on the referendum? Well, put it this way, we're in a negotiation and you know all of those options are possible. Uh, we're not going to start ruling stuff in and out okay. through media, um, but we'll see where we get to with that debate. What I can say is that people people deserve to have that discussion about their constitutional future. If we want to talk about people deserving to have that discussion about our constitutional future, then let's just take a step back and recognise that we're one of only the few jurisdictions in the world that don't have a supreme codified constitution. We operate under parliamentary supremacy and in fact it would be incredible 
incredibly reductive for a parliament to put forward a binary proposition to the public based on debates that parliamentarians themselves are having. Actually, if we want to talk well, about that, a fulsome, well, that, that's how David, you, if I may finish, please. Worked. If we want to talk, and again, I would have said that there were far better processes there through deliberative democracy, citizens' assemblies, and otherwise. And I put forward the same proposition here, which is that if we actually want to have a meaningful and informed discussion, then there are other deliberative democracy processes to facilitate that, the likes of a citizens' assembly, for example. But we're not hearing that. We're hearing a proposition for a reductive binary to be put forward to the public, preemptively decided by politicians, and we do think that that is dangerous. But through, uh, you would have public consultation on this, mm. I am presuming. Mm. You would have the... Yeah, I mean, let, let's just be clear about what we propose. Yeah. Um, you know, first of all, Parliament said the treaty has principles. It's, Parliament has never debated what they are. So we propose that Parliament actually have a bill, debate what the principles of the treaty mean, starting with the government's statement that it means that everyone's equal before the law, that the government has the right to govern, that we have the right to... I wonder if wealthy people are worried about that statement, everyone's equal before the law. Because there's the strange thing that if you've got money, you seem to uh, seem to have a different level of uh, access to getting out of a court system. So I wonder if wonder if that's what he's talking about. I think it's not, but I wonder if that's something that the wealthy would be concerned about. Hmm. To and then select committees. Yep. And then people input. can come along and submit. The Greens will be there. Yep. Everyone's there. The Party Māori's there. Everyone's, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, everyone's that, chatting. That, that, this, is, this is how democracy works yeah. in New Zealand. It's, it's, it, and it's actually been quite successful for the last few hundred years. <laughs> um, then, then the final thing is, uh, you say, look, this is a bit bigger than the average law parliament passes. I think we should actually allow people to vote, you know, yes or no, should this be how we understand the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi? And when people say, I, yes I heard Martin Davidson no. say, if you come for the treaty, with respect, she's not listening. What we're proposing would actually enhance the manner of the treaty. It would put the treaty at the centre of New Zealand's constitutional arrangement, mm. but properly understood and publicly yeah, based. It's interesting because we have the, we've had this debate before, mm -hmm. and actually, I think fundamentally, you both sort of agree. But on, we need to but, premise but, yes, the constitutional. It's conversation. just how we do go about having the conversation. Mm. As you disagree completely on that front. Mm -hmm. And so, I, again, I think that simply putting something forward in a reductive binary, and yeah, totally take on board your what point that we have select binary? committee processes. What does that mean? It means that you put forward a yes or a no to people. That's what well, a that's binary how, is by definition. So we. Not so that'll do. Just uh, him showing his complete idiocy there, either dismissiveness or idiocy, not not understanding what a binary is. Um, but yeah, interesting conversation about. Um, about the referendum, Chloe is saying about looking at how we r understand the treaty, perhaps, mm -hmm. and Seymour saying we need to understand, but they're both coming from very different places. One can obviously understand that, that, that they have different um, agendas for why they want to, quote-unquote, understand it. Uh, one suggests that David Seymour wants to understand it to make it less impactful, uh, whereas perhaps Chloe wants to get an understanding for the country about it to to see it operating in its in its fullest capacity, Chewy. Yeah, I, I think I, I think for David, it, it's a couple of things, right? A referendum seems so, as he said, civilized, so reasonable. You know, and, and there's there's a danger in what he's suggesting here because it isn't a binary. That, that's all the referendum's going to be. And then if you look at our history of having referendums, like, they've been an expensive shit show every time. And this is X playbook right down to a T, right? Pro-democracy, yeah. one person, one vote. But what we're talking about here is, is putting a referendum out there for, well, admittedly it's not about the agreement it's, it's the principles around the agreement which nobody fucking knows what that's about yeah but we're expecting people to have a, a, what a lawyer's understanding of the treaty of waitangi enough to make an informed decision about it like through my school the treaty of waitangi was barely touched on People do not have enough knowledge to make a good decision about this. And, and, and the debate around it, as shown by the Julian Bachelor traveling insane clown show, is so poisoned. The fact that, that Rimmer is playing into this, he, he, he can't not know. Yeah. He can't not know. 
I I would pay good money to see Chloe absolutely wipe the floor with him on, on these. She every time she gets a chance to speak, the information is so so dense and so well communicated compared to the absolute marshmallow words that come out of Seymour.